So here is my uh, string theory rant. Uh, I'm going to preface it by saying uh, it's improperly titled. It, it's really more my observations having been for a few years in particle physics. So, and I have a little couple of props here, but I'm just going to go through these points that I have uh, laid out. So, so about string theory. And by the way, I'm, I in no way mean to denigrate or say anything bad about anybody who uh, is a string theorist. I think it's a perfectly fine endeavor. I mean, why do, would any, any of them care about my opinion either? So it's fine. Uh, but so, so the first point is really the, uh, the difference between um, the difference between uh, when some theory is laid out, okay, when some theory is laid out and when there is experimental verification for it. That can be a year, can be 10 years, can be 40 years, can be 100 years, and can be from a short period of time, by our standards, to a long period of time. All right? And sometimes the experimental verification can happen before the theory. Now, in the case of string theory, there has been no experimental verification for, I think, something like 30, 40 years. So it's been a long time since all these people have been laboring away at this theory and then nothing that I know of, leave it in the comments if there has been some verification for a string theory, that has been found. All right, so that's really point number one. Just setting the stage of where uh, string theory is. Then when it comes to, I like these little truth tables uh, from, from um, uh, anyways, truth tables. So, so in, on this axis I have has gain theory. That's what I meant, gain theory, getting old. Has experimental verification, no or yes. Has a theory, no or yes. Of course, if, if it's a both no's, it means nothing. But so in the case of B meson on the case, if you saw my other videos about my, my very brief uh, particle physics stint, uh, B meson on the case have experimental verification and even though there, the underlying theory is laid out in the standard model, there isn't, that I know of, any theory that can tell you what the branching fractions of all the B mesons are. When you measure those branching fractions, that's the number you got, and that's it. I never saw anywhere that anybody had a theory where I could lay out all the probabilities in some, maybe like a perturbation theory, something like that, perturbation expansion, nothing like that. Then. The yes, yes are the ones that are kind of like happy, right? So in the yes, yes, you have like lasers, gravitation, uh, the lamp shift, which is one of my props. Uh, so in the case of the lamp shift, it's a very interesting case. So the lamp shift was measured, okay? And this is out of, uh, out of Wikipedia. It was measured and there was a shift between two of the two P levels of hydrogen and in theory, when you did quantum mechanics, there should be none. So they found a difference. And then people had to explain it. Hans Beta did some basic explanation, but it really required a full theory, uh, which is really, it's called quantum electrodynamics, and it's the self-energy of the electron. Okay? So there are cases even where there is an experimental measurement and then theory happens. All right? But string theory is in this unlucky corner, in my, from what I've seen, where there is no experimental verification and there is theory. Just start comparing it to other fields. Then the third point, I think, is the one where uh, I think a rent would be, you know, would have, would make its money, would make bank, is the total human cost. It's very different, and I didn't put it here, when you have a really tiny field where there's like 10 people laboring at it, writing papers for 20 years. It's all theory, it's, they say it's physics, nobody's found anything, so it's just a paper. You know, I think a lot of supersymmetry goes for, uh, in, that, in that bin. Uh, and of course, string theory. But I think the problem that I saw in physics that was, I found shocking, and I found shocking that it is, still is, is the diversion of resources. The entire field of theoretical particle physics basically you, I don't think, you know, I guess you can be, but really, you had to be a string theorist to be called a, a theoretical particle physicist. Mostly. Uh, somebody can debate me, but that's how I felt when I was in that, in that field. 
in the experimental side, but I interacted with theorists. I was around theorists. There were some of my faculty members, some of my teachers. So the thing that really happened with string theory is how it ballooned into thousands and thousands of papers by hundreds and hundreds of people uh, when really there's no experimental results. Okay. Now, that is not to say that someday somebody could make an, an experiment and prove something in here in string theory. So it could either be that the whole thing is just uh, creative math that has no physical basis, or some parts of it could actually be true and could have experimental results, or maybe the whole thing is true. Maybe the whole thing is true. We don't really know. Nobody can say. Now, uh, in the case, for example, which is a, a remarkable comparison to the standard model, the total number of people writing papers for the things that were found in the standard model, I believe was a smaller number of people and there were a smaller number of papers than has been spent on string theory. I think string theory has gotten so much uh, bandwidth from, the, from the, the physics community. And also, as an aside, I see a little bit of that uh, happening with category theory and math, but not quite. I don't think it's anywhere the same. I mean, this is really almost like an entire herd of buffalo being diverted out over some cliff called string theory. And it could be a cliff. It could be. It could be that this never happens. All right, but in the case of the standard model, a few people were working on it. There were some papers. And then, you know, WZ bosons, charmonium, BND mesons, the top quark, the Higgs boson, a bunch of experimental results. So, and that's very happy for the standard model. Uh, now, it is true, uh, my fourth point, that math and physics are different fields, all right? And that is the constraint of physics that makes it more difficult. In the case of math, if you can call all of string theory math, you're good to go. The equations work, matrices, uh, you know, tensors, the differential equations, whatever you want to put in there, it's all in there, fine, it's math. And so, yes, at some level, string theory reduces to just math if there is no experimental verification, if it's not true. The problem with that also, though, is that physical, physical equations require that something exists. So if you, for example, come up and you say, hey, not only is there a bottom and a, a down quark and a charm and a strange quark, there's actually a B prime, D prime, another doublet of some other quarks that are sort of in the middle in size and create mesons and baryons that are in between B and C, you know, B, D, C, S, B prime, D prime. But then people will go and say, look, we've, we have looked in this entire range. We've never found anything. You get laughed out of the room. It's like, no, it doesn't exist. You're done. And so all those mathematical equations that you laid out that are maybe are copies of the equations that you would, would have laid out for mesons and baryons are false. And so I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe uh, I'm too old and this will be like 50 years down the line where somebody finally says, okay, there really is nothing here. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to happen. I'm not going to live to see it. So, but, but the fields are different. Uh, f when there is no physics and you have mathematical equations, I don't really think you reduce yourself to the math because then the math doesn't matter. There's no physics. Whereas in the case of math, math is very lucky. Uh, you can have the monster group and the monster group is what it is. And there it is and somebody proved that it exists and you're done. So math, I think, is a little luckier than physics. Physics is based on experimental verification. It just is. That's just the way the field is. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the people who are string theorists, they still, they can teach other stuff that's uh, considered real and they have jobs and it's fine. I just wish that, I just wish that somebody had spent time on uh, more of the theory for which there is experiment, there are experimental results that nobody has worked on. There are a couple of books on this subject. I have, I thought I have both. Uh, Lee Smolin, I forget the reference. I'll try to find the reference. I know I have that book somewhere, but my books are all out of order uh, from when my kid was little and we barely had any, any time to, uh, to order things and we never got around to it. But this is one book that you, if you're interested in the subject, uh, you may read. I read it many years ago. And yeah, you know, he makes very good points. Uh, and there's a second book. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe it was Lee Smolin who said something about it. Okay, never mind. So there you have a reference. But that's all I have. Uh, I, I hope if a, a, a string theorist or somebody who knows anything about string theorists watches this video that you're not offended. I'm just saying that I wish, 
you know, I wish that this happened for you all sooner than later, because if you have to wait a hundred years, it's going to suck. <laughs>